What's up guys, Tech James here. So only a few days ago, I made a video about an overclock plugin on the PS Vita, but already a brand new one has come out and this one is a lot more advanced. In the last video, the plugin was very simple and it was called Lolita 500 and Lolita 444. Basically, you chose 500 MHZ or 444 MHZ and you just basically installed it and it would be running all the time. But this one is more of a, you know, a kind of like advanced plugin where you can open up a menu, you can change stuff and um, you don't have to have it running all the time. So let me show you a screenshot of it right here. This is the plugins menu open on the PS Vita home screen. And as you can see, we've got the overclock menu right here. It tells us the CPU, the peak temperatures, stuff like that. And you can change stuff. So you can change the CPU. And then we've also got three extras. We've got an ES4, the bus, and you can also change the XBR as well. Obviously, be careful when changing all of this stuff because it can increase the temperature and it can decrease the battery life. But in this video, I will be installing a PSV shell with auto plugins so you guys can follow along. You can install this with Vita shell as well. They do have their own GitHub, which I will link in the description. And here is the skprx file. You would just add this to your Euro or UXO tie folder, you know, just like a normal plugin. But it is a lot easier to install it with auto plugin and I will leave the auto plugin video in the description but I'm sure everyone has it anyway. So what is the PSV shell? This is a kernel mode plugin for overclocking your PS Vita which is currently compatible with firmware 3.60 and 3.65. It's similar to the PSV VSH menu. I think I did a video on that maybe last year and Lollicon I also did a video on that quite a while ago. Yeah it's an overclocking plugin but it has some new features. So these are all of the features it comes with obviously we've got all of these um things right here which we can overclock you can also overclock your psv to cpu to 500 just like the last video i made um you know it's kind of simple but if you guys didn't know it's actually 494 mhz in reality so it's got a pretty nice um, like dark mode on it. Um, it looks really nice. And um, if you guys want to install it, I will be installing this using auto plugin, but there is a guide here if you want to install it yourself. And it also tells you how to get the plugin working. So what you have to do to get it to show up is press select and up on your D-pad at the same time and you'll get the FPS counter. After that, press the button combination again and do it again to get the clock frequency menu. To get rid of it, press select and down. So just do it simultaneously until you get a new view mode and uh, more instructions can be found in the readme. So there you go. Let's go and install this on my PS Vita. There is a look at the FPS kind of menu as well. But let's install it and let's see what it looks like. So now that I'm actually on my PS Vita, we can go ahead and install it. So obviously I will be using auto plugin. Make sure you have this installed. I'm sure you do anyway. And also make sure it's on version 4.11 or higher. This is the latest version which will have this plugin in. So let's go and start this up and then we can install it. So what we're going to do from here is go on plugins for Vita, install plugins. We're going to make sure our UXO or our URO is selected, whichever one you use. We are going to scroll down and let's look for it. So we're looking for PSV. So it should be somewhere just here. And it's um, this one right here. PSV shell by Electri, hopefully I'm saying that right, version 1.0. So what we're going to do, we're going to press X on this one. It's going to say please wait and it's going to install in seconds. We're then going to press start and we are going to exit and reboot our PS Vita. Okay, so once it's restarted, your plugin should be running, unless you have to run your custom firmware again. Now, you guys might have noticed on the guide, it says this works on 3.60 and 3.65. Well, I'm running 3.67, and it does actually work perfectly fine. I did actually test it out already, just to make sure. So it should work on any firmware, as long as you've got, you know, custom firmware running, and um, you should be good to use it. So once this finishes, what we're going to do is we're going to try, and we're going to try and load it up. Now, on the guide, what it said, you have to press select and up at the same time to scroll through. So as you can see, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is actually a very small FPS counter at the top there, and it's counting, and it's roughly saying 59 to 60 FPS, which is what it should be. If we do select and up again, it will change. This time it changes into a slightly different menu. We've got the CPU info, and we've also got the FPS counter. If you do select and up again, it will change, and this time is the kind of overclocking menu. So from here, you guys can I uh, just take a look at the profile right now these are your default settings 
So what you do is you press X to select the thing you want to edit and now you can go up and down um, or left and right with the D-pad and you can set it at 500 then press X again and you can actually just go on save profile and all you have to do is go down to save profile and then it should actually be running so you can press um, select and up again and that's basically the last feature so if you press select and down we can scroll all the way back down and then we kind of close it but it should still be running and our PS Vita will actually be at 500 MHZ so obviously press select and up to get it back and you can pretty much change this to whatever you want to you can change everything here CPU is the main thing you want to change you can change this stuff as well um, but you might want to be a bit careful when doing it but yeah you can save the profile you can pretty much set it as whatever you want it to be and there you go so that is pretty much it for this very quick and simple plugin I really like this plugin it's very easy to use and it's nice because you can customize it and get it to do whatever you want it to do it's even good as a simple FPS counter if you guys enjoyed this quick video make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one